boys, welcome back to another video, and today we are once again back with another FIFA 23 Ultimate Team video, and today I'm going to be telling you guys how to be legendary difficulty on squad battles. So I have done this type of video before, obviously I make one of these videos every single year, but the way I'm going to do it again this year is I have recorded my own gameplay, I recorded a game from earlier today, and what we're going to do is just sit back, watch it together, and go through the highlights, and I'm going to basically try and explain what you need to do, what you need to not do, what works, what doesn't, and uh... Yeah, just all the things I know of how to beat Legendary. And the reason this video is a little bit later than usual is because I didn't just want to rush a video out as soon as possible on how to beat Legendary. Because the facts are, if you rush out a video explaining how to beat Legendary only a few days after the game's come out, chances are you don't really know what you're talking about. So I've taken a couple of weeks just to get used to the game and uh, yeah, we're doing this now. Also, if you're new to the YouTube channel and you're like, does this guy actually know what he's talking about? Who is this guy? Basically on Xbox, I used to go by the gamer tag Virgil Dan Dyke. So if you play a lot of squad battles on the Xbox, you probably recognize me. I have had a slight little name change now to It's VDD. But uh, yeah, basically I have finished top 200 every single week for the past three years. And not only top 200, but a bunch of first place finishes in there, maybe 40, 50 across the course of those years. And uh, yeah, this isn't some weird flex. This is just basically me saying I do know what I'm talking about. So let's not waste any more time and uh, let's get into this thing. So every bit of gameplay you're going to see in this video will be on Legendary Difficulty. I'm going to show you me going into the game on Legendary because just in case there is always that one guy who's like, you know, you've, you've put it on semi-pro or something, whatever. How do I get all these high finishes if I don't play on Legendary and Ultimate? But there it is, Legendary Difficulty, and we go into the game. I'm going to let it load up as well. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this video down, and I'm just going to show you guys the points that I think are worth showing, worth displaying, and uh, yeah, instead of making you sit and watch the whole game. So I'll be back. I'm actually back already. That I actually had to rewind the video to go back, because as you can see, I went straight into attacking as soon as the game started. Now... I have got my own set of 4-2-3-1 Variation 2 custom tactics. And not only do they do well in squad battles, but this past week in foot champs, I actually went 19-1. and won. It is my very best finish ever, and I did it using the tactics that I use for squad battles. So I'll make sure to, tr well, I'll try to make sure to link the tactics down below. But if I don't, you can find them on the channel, and uh, they're definitely worth trying. Also, some early defending worth mentioning here as well. I always like to try and do my defending with my CDMs. We'll cover this a bit more later on in the video. But basically, you don't want to be pulling centre-backs and left-backs out of position. And obviously, in that scenario, I wouldn't have been dragging centre-backs anyway. But you always want to try and do your defending with your CDMs as much as you can. And bang, into the first goal here. So let's rewind that a little bit. Let's rewind it. Let's rewind it and see what actually plays out here. So I, I think I play the ball to Dembele, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, play it back to Dembele. I go for the finesse shot, gets blocked. Very lucky that it falls back to me. That is just pure luck. Play it back to Ronaldo, finesse shot into the top bags. It's worth mentioning that this year, finesse shots in the box are so much better than they were in the last FIFA. It seems like EA have really made an effort to make sure that the closer to the goal you are, the more effective a finesse shot is, which makes perfect sense because that's how it is in real life. But it wasn't like that last FIFA. It was the green time finesses from outside the box, which can still work on this FIFA, but for finesse shots you are better off inside the box with them. Now, I kind of want to show an example of bad defending here because, well, that's what this video is all about, right? We're trying to learn. So as you can see right now, I'm with Fafana trying to tackle his midfielder. That's that's absolutely fine. But when it gets passed into Iglesias, I change to Chancellor Mbemba right here. And I do the absolute cardinal sin in squad battles, which is I drag him out. Now, I don't know why I did it. I, I, I maybe was just watching something. I don't know, not paying attention. And I do get away with it. But you can see... The spaces that this creates, because I, once I've dragged Mbemba out, Casemiro has to go and fill in for him. And then Casemiro also ends up coming out. So if this was somebody else and someone made this run into this space here, I could have conceded just as easy as that. And it all stems from me dragging out Mbemba when I absolutely didn't need to. So there's the first example of just don't drag defenders out. Do the defending with your midfielders. And there's goal number two, um, power shots. But listen, lads, power shots on this game are just broken. They, they, are, they are just so, so good, especially when you've got someone like Ronaldo, but you don't need Ronaldo to do it. Um, but if you can just get the space, because you need a few seconds to pull these time shots off. But if you practice them, get used to them, learn when you should take them. Um, they are so overpowered right now. That might change with a patch. I don't know. 
But yeah, definitely be looking for power shots because they are very, very easy goals right now. Especially if you're against a team that's tough to break down. And again here, you can see with the defending, instead of getting a centre back, I am dragging my midfielders around, pulling them all the way back deep if I need to, um, and trying to do as much defending with them as I can. Now this goal, this goal is basically the reason I play the 4-2-3-1. And it's basically because I like to have a lot of width. Because what being in the 4-2-3-1 does is it allows you to really stretch the defense. Like because you've got a player on one side of the pitch and you've got another player all the way on the other side of the pitch. So what it really does is just allow you to stretch the defense, create a lot of gaps. And that's how this goal becomes so easy. That's, that's pretty much it because the fullback, because Sterling is hovering around here, he's on the outside. This fullback has to stay and watch Sterling because if he comes off Sterling to come inside and I'm just going to play a simple pass to Sterling. So that's why I like to play something with a lot of width because it just creates space and makes really simple goals like that. And now we've got a corner goal. Lads, I cannot stress enough how overpowered corners are on squad battles. Basically, I find that the keepers don't come out for corners a lot. So I've kind of got a little bit of a strat for corners on squad battles. Basically, what I do is I aim, aim the cross a little bit just outside the 18-yard box. I try and aim it just, just aiming so it's just outside. I don't change the right analog stick at all. I just leave it the way it is. Leave it on default. And then I aim for around three bars of power. And then if everything goes right, what it usually does is put it right on the edge of the box. Um, and the keeper doesn't come for it on squad battles a lot. Maybe if he's got the trait where they come for corners, that changes. But if you do it just right, I score so many goals like this. Aim it just outside the 18-yard box. Three bars of power. Whip it in. And if you've got someone good at heading, obviously I've got Ronaldo. But it doesn't need to be Ronaldo. Just someone good in the air. You will score so many goals just doing that. Trust me. Trust me. So just to show an example of defending here. Sometimes, sometimes you have to use a centre-back. You know, as I always say try, try not to use a centre-back. But a situation here... Like, obviously, I've got to try and pull centre-backs out, especially when they win the ball back here. I'm not going to switch to Casemiro or Fofana here, because if I do, chances are this guy is just going to walk in the space and score. So in a scenario like this, obviously, you have to use a centre-back. But when you do have to, if you're going to be pulling him around and pulling him out, you have to be sure it's either your only option or you are going to win the ball. Because if not, you could be in trouble. And then again, on the counter-attack, you're seeing why I like the width because it creates so much space. And that bit of defending literally leads into our next goal. Again, with the uh, finesse shot finish as well. So let's just go back. Let's just go all the way back. All the way back. So a bit of defending where I was forced to use my centre-back, Thiago Silva. Just made sure I won the ball. Instantly we turn. We're passing out and we're on the break. Sterling, because we've got that formation with the width, is on the move. And he's set on getting behind. Uh, he makes his run down the wing into the box and again this FIFA finesse shots very viable option so yeah just as easy as that really for our fifth goal as well which means we don't need any more goals this game because once you get five you no longer get more points for goals so now the job basically becomes harvesting corners I'm trying to get to 10 corners to try and get maximum points for corners and once again power shots are a really really good option for that as well to get your initial corner taking a power shot and putting it right at the keeper he usually saves it and doesn't catch it. He parries it out somewhere and a lot of times that goes for a corner. And now what I'm trying to do is basically just boost corners. I'm taking a short corner and I'm trying to walk into the defender so that he'll tackle me straight back out for another corner. Um, and that is how you get more points in squad battles. You get points for corners, you get points for shots on target, you get points for goals. I've got a full video on the channel explaining all this stuff, how to get maximum points per game. So if you don't know all the ways and things you need to do per game to get most points, definitely go and check that video out. I'll link it at the end of this video. Oh, we, we, we've accidentally scored a goal. So let me, let me pull that back. That was a complete accident. What I was actually trying to do here was uh, go for a corner. But as I've been mentioning, power shots completely, completely OP. So even though I actually tried to smash that straight at the keeper so that he'll save it for a corner, it's actually uh, flown in. So yeah, again, just make sure you can find some space. Make sure when you try this, you've found enough space because it does take a couple of seconds to get the shot off. But if you, if you find the space, you catch it right. Um, those shots really do just fly in. And me here, I remember my thinking here. I wanted to try and showcase all the best ways to uh, score goals. So I went for an outside of the boot shot. If you don't know, even though I don't think I score one in this game, outside of the boot shots are really, really OP as well. There's so many ways to score goals on this FIFA. Uh, and that's just another one of them. If you find yourself in the space, you've got like a right footer on the right hand side. 
hold LT, and just go for a go for an outside of the foot shot because you know a lot of the time they do work, especially if you time it. And I think again here we do go for another power shot and get a corner out of it. So again, just proving that power shots are very good for scoring goals and very good for boosting corners. And it's worth mentioning, by the way, that if you don't know how to do a power shot on the Xbox, it is L B R B and B. And on the PlayStation, it is L1, R1, and Circle. And again here, I think we're just boosting corners. Yeah, we're just, we're just continuing to boost corners to try and get 10 corners so we can get the maximum points for our corners. If you don't know how to call a player short, that is just R1 on the Xbox or... No, R1 on the PlayStation, RB on the Xbox. Uh, and you can call a player short, pass it to him, and try and boost corners this way. Because it honestly is the easiest way of getting your corners up. Okay, so now I've got all my corners. As you can see, I've got 10. I actually got one more than I needed because when I take this kick, when I take this corner, that actually becomes 11. So basically, now that I've got the corners, I've got all my goals. As you can see, I just switched into my defensive style of tactics because um, now all I've got to do is kill the game. So basically, I'm just going to be passing the ball around the back for the rest of the game. Uh, not really a lot to show here, but we're just trying to keep possession because we've done everything we can to get maximum points. And uh, yeah, we just now need to see the game out. Oh yeah, I forgot there was one last goal and it's actually funny that I scored this goal because if I remember I was actually doing a chip to show that chips are actually really bad this year and they are. Chips last year, very good option especially in the box for scoring goals. This year you usually either over hit it in terms of power or you get the power right and it misses the goal. That one just happened to go in but in general chip shots this year are not your most viable option for scoring goals at all. And that was, in fact, the end of the game. So, yeah, we got our five goals. We got our clean sheet. We got our ten corners. That is about as perfect as a squad battles game can go, really. Um, I think I pulled up the stats here just to show you. Yeah, we got all our shots. We had high possession. Uh, we got a bunch of passes off. Good pass possession. Uh, good pass percentage, sorry. We got a bunch of corners. And, yeah, just about as perfect as it can go. And I will show you me coming out of the game just so you can see. I did get 2,737 points, which you can only get by playing at least on Legendary or Ultimate. And then I will show you it again once we get back into the menus that that game was in fact on Legendary. Just in case you still don't believe me. So basically to summarize up what you just saw, my advice would be getting a set of custom tactics that you like. I personally definitely prefer playing with width. I will include my tactics down below. If I forget to, they are on the channel. Um... I just think it helps stretch the field so, so much on squad battles and it's really, really useful for creating space to just score easy goals. As for scoring goals themselves, you've actually got a lot of options. Uh, finesse shots are good inside the box. Green time finesse shots outside the box can still work. I was still scoring a few with Ronaldo, but they're definitely not as good as they were last year and um, I wouldn't advise popping them off constantly because most of them aren't great. Power shots, obviously, I think they are the very best way of scoring goals, especially from distance. Um, if you can get the angles just right and get the space and the time to take power shots, they fly in. Outside the boot shots as well, as I mentioned, although I didn't score one that game, if you just hold L2, L2, L, yeah, L2 or LT, and you're on the player's right side to hit it outside of the boot, um, especially if you've got time finishing on and you time it green, those things can fly in. So that's definitely a viable option as well. And obviously you've got your corners. Obviously you need to be going for corners anyway. If you're trying to get maximum points, you need to try and get 10 corners per game. So scoring from the corners doesn't hit. Um, just aim it just outside the edge of the 18 yard box, three bars of power, get it on that man at the front post. And if he's good in the air, you will score quite a few corners just from that. But yeah, that is going to do it from me, boys. Thank you so, so much for watching. I don't want to make this video too, too long. I don't need to make a 20 minute video telling you how to beat legendary you know it's not it's not that deep to be honest uh but if you have got any questions feel free to drop them down below i will try my best to help anyone out um thank you for watching and i'll see you boys again in the next one cheers boys